Hello, everybody, and welcome to I Forgot to Double Check what session this is um, for this particular group. I knew I was supposed to look, but we are playing Apocalypse Keys. This is with Team Ouroboros. We're in the middle of um, we're in the middle of solving the Mananangal murders. This is our ooh, I found it. Okay, so this is our fourth session. Technically third session because you know session zero stuff. Uh, but yeah, and so before we get into it, I will um, we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, so I'll go, I'll go ahead and start. My name is Jamie. I use they them pronouns, and uh, I made this game um, as a way of making sense of 2020 early on. It has helped me um, all throughout. <laughs> but it is a game of monsters that have to fight monsters who have to hold back the apocalypse. They're very powerful, sometimes too powerful. Uh, and um, they have to resist certain aspects that will bring them closer to their doom. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm really excited. Uh, this group has been really, really cool. Uh, we were so good at picking up those keys and clues, and then we got blindsided um, by the theorizing. So, <laughs> but such a good strong start. <laughs> not so bad. We, we're just in a hell dimension of some kind. It's not too terrible. It's just you know could be better, uh, but it's not the worst just yet. So, with that, let's do introductions for our characters. We will go in character keeper order. Uh, meaning we'll start with Matthew, who's playing the summoned or thorn. So Matthew, can you tell us about yourself and your character, please? Um, whew, yes, hi, I am Matthew. Uh, he, him pronouns, playing uh, the uh, thorn, the summoned, he, him pronouns. Uh, thorn is uh, a creature summoned from another world who uh, was supposed to be a sort of... Um, uh, oh, 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 to be weaponized by a by a, 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 a an aberrant cult, um, he was found and uh, by the division and uh, convinced to work with them to reject his um, to sort of Armaged his destiny towards Armageddon. Um, yeah, um, he is a sort of like you know as you as it would be in this kind of milieu a dark brooding fella wrestling with you know his capacity for violence and mayhem while also trying to find love and acceptance in the world yeah absolutely and just as a reminder uh you can gain darkness every time you feel unloved or abandoned overreact with violence ask someone to give you their best shot and not hold back or ask someone to love you and only ever you but yeah that, that is that is so real <laughs> <laughs> It is very real, but yeah. Uh, and I, I'm also going to remind myself: the darkness demands of you to push away what you need most and to fall in love with the darkness. So by this logic, you know. So by this logic, the entirety of my high school life would just be gaining darkness. Yes, we knew each other in high school, so I'm not going to say any more than that. I'm <laughs> Okay, and then next we have Ada the Pure, who is played by Sherry. So Sherry, tell us about yourself and Ada. Uh, sure, um, my name is Sherry. I use she, her pronouns. I am playing Ata, who is the pure. She uses she, they pronouns. Um, she is a cosmic entity who was, uh, when she was found, had been put inside of a religious statue and her thing is, is that she could hear the pr um, prayers and entreaties of those around her who are oppressed, and she will answer them with her power and destroy that which uh, uh, causes them pain and pretty much everything around it as well. She's a completionist, so to speak. Um, that is her past. She has spent many years since uh, the late part of World War II with the division. And so, um, but it is only recently that she has been allowed to come back out into the world. She's recreated herself in a guise that is acceptable to the outside world. She's worked with Team Ouroboros. They are her friends. Um, and besides a few of the division agencies, probably her only friends. Um, the only people that she has a sense of them as people for real beyond just entity shapes with prayers. Um, 
So let's see here. Her powers of darkness are mostly cosmic um, energies, and mostly all she can do is destroy. Um, what does the darkness demand? That she be the do downfall of those she care for, and that eventually she will erase humanity itself. Um, and to gain darkness, all she has to do is feel overwhelmed or numb, to give into my power and let it erase my will, to ask someone to use my powers as they see fit, and to ask someone to punish me for my power. So that seems really kind of normal and healthy. So absolutely no problems no problems uh yeah and then uh so asher didn't cut join us today uh but um we have i think i should at least like summarize because we're at least gonna talk about uh him a little bit but asher Den is um currently in this amazing form uh with adam <laughs> writing <laughs> I have to ask Sherry, she the moment wanted... you, saw, you saw this, if you think I'm going to write this. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's probably going to be a recurring thing, let's be honest. Yes, so. I hope so. <laughs> he has wings. It's yeah. just... It's amazing. It's perfect. It's mm -hmm. perfect. So, uh, actually, is Lamassu the last uh, of his kind uh, as far as he knows? And so, um, very enjoys the order of things, um, believes that Splenda and sugar should be separated even once they are all together in one jar, um, things like that. So, uh, but yeah, but he he believes in tradition and upholding those traditions, uh, has a problem with monotheism because, you know, uh, that completely destroyed his kind uh, as is normal. So yeah, um, and then we have Daya. So Patrick, tell us about yourself and Daya, please. Uh, I'm Patrick, I use he, him pronouns, and I'm playing The Fallen Playbook uh, with Daya, or Agent Day, also uh, he, him pronouns. Uh, he is a, a fallen angel, a fallen servant of a demanding and confusing god. Um, he had gotten to the point where he wasn't sure, he still isn't sure if he was put here to stop the apocalypse, to cause the apocalypse. Um, he just knew that he couldn't be where he was anymore and he had to try and find his own answers. Um, his fall took away most of his uh, angelic awesomeness but left him with a voice that can crack reality and so he has fake glamour and fear manipulation uh, as his powers of darkness. Um, what the darkness demands of him is to fall in love with a monster who can destroy me and to curse the one I love because nothing's ever happened. Uh, and gaining darkness, the way I gain darkness is to feel that others are beneath me, which is part, it's just true. Uh, react with spite or arrogance, which again, same thing, isn't hard, most people suck, so. Uh, ask someone to worship me, which uh, I hope we're building towards, and ask someone to betray another, which is one of those that you really have to like set up and work towards. It's not one you just toss off all the time. Absolutely. Okay, very cool, very cool. So those are uh, our Monstrous Agents. So just to catch up, uh, because it's been a couple of weeks since the last one, uh, we are in the middle of our murder mystery, uh, the Mananangal murders. Um, yeah, and so it's at Complexity 6. We were doing pretty good, because uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight keys, meaning we were rolling at a plus two. Um, so I'll go over what we have so far. Uh, so we know that uh, you discovered in one of the bodies, um, because basically you were in the apartments, a very old building. It's been around since the 60s, uh, mostly houses the Mananangal community who can't find housing elsewhere in Manila, uh, in the Philippines. And so uh, at first they were they thought they were just going missing, you know, maybe they were just taking a while because they would split, like their upper half would split off and it was assumed they would fly away to like visit family or friends who were far off. But uh, later the upper halves were found uh, in deplorable states. Um, obviously something terrible has happened to them. And so that's why the division was called in. Uh, your contact once again is um, Sister Teresa, uh, 
she used to work for the division. She was one of the few uh, human agents uh, who had a similar job as you to hold back the apocalypse, uh, has a especially close relationship with Thorne, uh, but she came back to the Philippines to take care of her ailing mother. Uh, and so um, you were able to find in one of the bodies, there is a broken dagger. Uh, Ada has seen several false copies, including this one. Uh, it's meant to destroy creatures of darkness. It was recently made. It's based off of old designs. An average person wouldn't know anything about it. Uh, Dai, was a, uh, Dai was able to find um, by talking to our duende uh, that one of the bodies was found with an obscene amount of money torn into small pieces and laid out in an odd pattern around the body of Jin. The word rebirth is part of the ritual pattern, but the ritual language is written by someone who doesn't really understand it. Uh, and then uh, the ritual surrounding Jin's death was to create a Manalangal, and Jin was the second victim. So Samantha Reyes, the first victim, her cell phone was smashed. She got a lot of angry messages. You can't back off now. Remember, this isn't just about you. Um, and so we had at a Ada tried to call uh, who, who this number was, and it, it was someone mysterious who apparently knows about the division, but they wouldn't give uh, other information other than that. So uh, because Ashton sat down to do tower readings for uh, almost the entire building, uh, he was able to find out that several Manalanga have been receiving threatening letters along with photos of them. So someone is obviously stalking them. Uh, they were also receiving similar messages like Samantha, but they didn't understand why they were getting those messages. And, um, ooh, poor Franklin. I'm so glad he met such a horrible end. So uh, we discovered that Franklin Wolf, the celebrity backpacker, uh, had strange bugs burrowing into his skin. They were controlling his action without his knowledge. Uh, at one point, fetus like Mananaga were bursting forth from his back. So. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we can assume he was being used in some way, um, or maybe he's behind the whole thing. We don't know yet. We haven't hit that theory yet. Uh, but basically, Ada had to uh, take him out in order to protect the other Mananango. And finally, Lily de Leon, uh, the third victim, the friend of Mickey, had a wedding dress, but she hadn't even told her best friend of Mickey about getting married. Uh, it was also covered with the same bugs, and they follow a strange, the same strange pattern as the ritualistic money stuff, but Ada destroyed the dress and the bugs. Uh, so what else did we learn? We also learned that um, because Ada tried to find out who is behind this like on the highest level, um, and we found out that it's the Inquisitors, fallen angels who are trying to impress God and have the apocalypse happen on their own terms. But Ashadon was trying to make sense of who was in charge of it on this lower level. Um, and so we have a theory that it was instead uh, local government officials who had been wronged in some way or wanted to control something. Um, unfortunately, the theory was not complete. I don't want to say it's completely inaccurate, you know, in case you want to stick with it and fine tune it a bit, we can. Um, but while Ashton and the rest are trying to figure out what is going on in the chapel, uh, the bugs that had been uh, following things. Oh, I have to, I have to uh, say the bugs are also related to um, Daya and Ashton found them. In the, in the ancient Mananangal like, uh, site. So they're meant to cleanse impurities. Um, but inside they have this beautiful uh, Mananangal who I think we can um, all assume is not completely normal because they, they strangely look like a beautiful, like, well, Mickey's also beautiful, but like they look like Mickey in like a strange way. Like it's meant to mimic Mickey in some way. Um, and then Thorn, we lost track of you. You gave into the darkness. Your soul was corrupted. Uh, Sister Teresa was like, "Oh no!" To get pulled into a hell site like last time. Uh, and so Thorn pulled in the other monster. Uh, the others went through with him. So we're gonna see um, what happens with that. Sister Dax also got pulled through, unfortunately, and we haven't seen what Sister Dax is up to. Uh, last thing we saw was in the strange 
that I mentioned where it's mostly like inky blackness and, and this horrible aching void, but there are like bits of church that are uh, that are cracked and in this place. Um, and our Mananaga was trying to, I'm trying to remember Thorne, like you were trying to take away his power, right? Um, and uh, because he was trying to take yours, but even though you were able to took it, take it, like just more power started to course through him. So there's something going on with the Mananago, the fact that they can keep accessing power. Um, My understanding is that I tried to take the power and while I succeeded, he just refreshed his power. Like, like, mm -hmm. like he's a source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, bad juju all around. Um, and then our insects showed up and then they became incredibly like several uh, feet huge instead in this strange hellish dimension. No big deal, um, but yeah, <laughs> it'll be fine. Uh, and that's where we ended things. Did I miss anything? Um, I, I, when we we're in that strange side dimension with the, the men and girls, gods or spirits or whatever they were. Um, I, I did make a deal with one of them there to, to carry their voice across the veil and uh, bring it to Elder Hadrupa. That's right, that's right. Amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, because they have been cut off from the, are the ancestors of the Mananaga can no longer communicate with the Mananaga. So that's another, that's another thing, right? So only Daya was able to hear them um, yeah, that's right. Even Asherden wasn't able to, I remember, so, um. Obviously. <laughs> but yeah, good point, good point. Uh, and in fact, they were able to help you get into that hellish dimension, uh, to follow Thorn. So, we start up, let me set the scene for everybody. Uh, so, Thorn, you are standing in front of this beautiful Mananaga who is just so delighted to see you uh, surrounded by all these bugs but these flesh eating bugs that cleanse impurities they have now grown several feet tall um, there's just like dozens of them filling up this church uh, the strange inky darkness and what little light there is is gleaming off of their carapace and exoskeletons and there's this there's this stench that's coming off of them uh, on everything that they've ever fed on, that they've ever cleansed, just emanating from them. Um, and you can see the Mananaga, he gently places a finger against his lips and he smiles. And he looks at you, Thorn, a little disappointed. Are you sure you won't play with me? And Thorn, do you respond or? I say, I don't do games. Nice, nice. And at that exact moment, the the portal tears open and Asherton comes up with a very happy Ada on his back. <laughs> oh yeah, actually I remember Daya came in through first because Daya was the one who had to uh, open up the portal. So Daya steps in, I assume beautifully, just walking ahead, like he owns this part of the hell dimension, no big deal. Um, it's fine. I mean, who hasn't been slumming in a few hell dimensions before? It's where the best parties are. 100%. Uh, and as you step through, um, Ada, you can sense that Ashadon is having a hard time pulling the both of you completely through to this dimension. Uh, he lets out a characteristic upset grunt as he realizes the amount of extra work he's going to have to do for everybody else. Um, as he like hangs in the balance in between the, the dimensions. And she goes, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And she will put her arms around his neck and sort of like just slide off of his back and hold on to him. She goes, I'm so sorry if I made it harder. She goes, probably have to sort something and then it'll be okay. And she'll sort of like pat his chest. And, and he, makes it, he makes it sound like, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> but you can sense that he has to manipulate time in mm -hmm. small bursts just to keep um, just to keep everything stable. And you realize it's because there's something going on in this pocket of the dimension. It's not incredibly stable, 
right oh, so really? yeah Ada you've broken a lot of things in your long I long life have. and you can sense how fragile everything is here like it's ready it's like it's like eggshell cracking fragile like you can sense how this dimension wants to implode in on itself and you realize it's probably the bugs um okay um and I think what she she just the first thing is that that if there's that sort of will here if there isn't that's fine that's the kind of information itself yeah i'm so sorry that my internet decided to hiccup right at that moment so like i missed most of it oh <laughs> so sorry mm -hmm. no so essentially since she can hear the pleas and entreaties of people like for what it is that they want or need what is causing them pain um she will check for that first in case there is consciousness or a person here if that makes any sense some sort of yeah yeah something yeah. she's supposed to protect if that makes any Ooh. sense yeah i like that and as you extend your senses you don't have to roll for this because this is something you naturally uh, attune to um you can sense you don't recognize his his presence completely first because it's so different from what he projects but you realize it's sister dax um and so Sister Dax normally acts like very in charge, very in control, very, uh, very logical, very removed from their emotions. But uh, you can sense instead that this Sister Dax is just desperate and pleading and worrying. And you, you realize like there's a statue all the way at the end uh, of the church that's cracking. It's, it's in the shape of Sister Dax, like very vaguely, this angelic like shape. It feels very familiar when you look at it from the from the outside, uh, and you can you can tell that they're doing something to him. Um, okay, and certainly I have great sympathy for being trapped in a st in a statue, and I think that there's a thing of there's a great many things she should be taking care of, but instead she sort of goes. <laughs> To say that she runs is maybe incorrect. She she sort of uh, propels herself across the church area towards Dax, but as she goes by the the thing that is brought Thorn here, she goes, "You're not Mickey," <laughs> and said. Uh, but yeah, she zooms up to that that statue to sort of free. Dax, if she can. And as you get closer to the statue, you realize that the it's less stone and it's more like that insect-like hardness that is like chitin. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's how you pronounce it. Okay, I've been reading. That's it. how I pronounce it. Yeah, I've I, been reading it. I've only ever read it. People don't say it that out loud often. So. <laughs> but yeah, so like, and and you can hear the crackling of it. But before you can get there, the insects, you know, part of them move like water to block you and you can tell that sister Dax is very important to them for some reason um, oh, and a lot of them like rise up and it kind of it looks like a, a centipede except extremely fat just like rising up to try to stop you and it's got like all these like beady glowing eyes that go all along down its abdomen and midsection does Dax want these insects away or does Dax want to be protected by the insects? Yeah, when you tune into when you tune into Sister Dax, all you can really sense the word the only words that come through properly are I will make any sacrifice if it means protecting the Mananangas. Um and I think that she will step up to him, throw her arms around the form and go, you don't get to make that choice. And um, I will I will do what I need to to burn these insects away. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so this sounds like, do you want to, oh, do you still have your hold from a knife's edge? Okay, do you want to go a knife's edge or do you want to try 
um, unleashing the dark? Like, do you just want one blow or do you want to, you know? Um, I think ooh, it makes sense to do a knife's edge, isn't it? When I do that, that's the. Yeah, you can just do it. I, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so it's when she says those words mm -hmm. and she's trying to figure out what's going on. She, she hates it because she's so stupid. She wishes she weren't stupid. This would be easier. Oh. Um, so I have to make a roll and I can use darkness if I want. Yes, you have I'll three. Add one. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So add two, roll the dice. Oh my God, a horrible roll. So How horrible is that's horrible. A, two ones and then <gasps> I add a one and it gives me a three. Oh. <laughs> Good thing you can't hear Matthew behind the music. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, no amount of bonds is going to help with that. Okay. Actually, okay. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> At least we're getting the bad rolls. Out yeah. Of the way. That's okay. So I get to mark a doom, which gives me a doom move. I get to mark a condition. That's awesome. And I hold two. Yeah, so it really two. just turns out for the best. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm going to clear my doom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mark a take a doomed move. Nice. And then uh, let's see here. And then I get a condition. Mm. This is going to be. I think I'll go with. Um, oh, this is hard. Probably on a reactive. I think if in the sense that she's just like in that moment and as things come at her, she's reacting to it. Does that make any sense? I yeah. think that's, that makes sense for it to be that mm -hmm. thing. So she's a little obsessed with Dax and, <laughs> and just reacting to the threats to Dax. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. Like you're in full okay. like Terminator like yes. mode. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. that makes sense. Yeah, and I think the, the reason why this happens with the role, like as you, as you tell sister Dax that this is not your decision to make or um, is, is that how you put it like this is not yeah your, that's yeah. not your decision to make mm -hmm. and like as that happens um the statue reaches out and touches your face and you hear sister Dax say I dreamt of you before I met you I know that you'll destroy me and I know that it'll be for the best he says. But not now. And there's this soft chuckle that comes. Perhaps dreams are strange. And yet I believe in God. If I would anger him and if I should no longer exist, if it would be according to his plans, I am at peace. And there's just something about the way that he's just given up. I think that makes that's, me so angry. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And, and you can sense like he's not even, you can sense that Sister Dax is powerful enough to fight this off, but he doesn't want to, right? Something in him is, is broken, is shattered. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, and I think, I think then she goes, it's, it isn't for you to make me prove myself. And I think that's what it is. It's, it's like, she gets really angry that she's, that he's, that Dax is making her prove herself she just knows it's not fair yeah like a toddler absolutely I okay and then do i unleash the dark is that what you do yeah what would you like to do with that hole because you're you're trying to aim it at these bug like huge creatures that are trying to feast on do something with sister dax so unleashing the dark you can also shield others from terrible danger um yeah, I think that's the thing is the first thing we're going to do is shield others from terrible danger, primarily Dex, but also the others, because I know there's going to be blowback from this moment. Does that make any sense? Oh, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is definitely what I will do with one of my hold. Um, and I guess I can mark Doom again. Do I want to race down that Doom track again? I guess it depends. Are you comfortable with your humanity slipping away as you do this, or uh... probably, probably this is not a particularly human place. Yes, yes. Okay, and then uh, let's see here. 
And then uh, it says I'm going to cause great collateral damage unless I mark another condition. That should be awesome. Um, maybe I'll just cause additional collateral damage. That's okay. We're not we're not back in. You know, it's it's just a, a hell dimension connected to other dimensions. Like that's gonna go anyway. It's anyway not even a now. real place. <laughs> exactly. So so here it goes, guys. I go get ready. <laughs> Oh, so and, and then when I do that, it means that I get another thing uh, where I can ask for, when I unleash the dark, I can choose one from below. Is that an additional or instead of the other options? Ooh. Because it see. says I can choose it even on a miss. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You still get this. No problem. Okay. All okay. right. Um, yeah, so you get to choose. Yeah, good question. So, and I think I think the thing is, is that they'll tell me more than they wanted to. Ooh. Um, yeah. So. Ooh. that's nice. So that's one of your options, and then the second one. Um, I assume you want to. Let's see here. I gotta look. Oh my gosh! All these awesome moves. <laughs> it's like a delicious cafeteria of pudding. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just imagining an entire like spread of puddings. Yeah. So exactly. All the flavors of bland milky goodness. Um, I think I'm going to expose a weakness or flaw. Oh, nice, nice. Very good, very good. Okay, so as you as you do this, um, what does it look like when you when you unleash the dark on them, the, 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 do the eye glow things happen again or? Oh, yeah, I mean, it is that sort of thing of, um, yeah, and it, it, the eyes glow, the, essentially she sort of all of her exterior form powders um, and she's just that cosmic form. But this time it's like she also loses her form as a human and just kind of blankets uh, the area around uh, Sister Dax. It, it just kind of flows over and those those insects just, you know. Yeah, it's that kind of thing where they all turn into like ash in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, the ones that are close enough to you anyway, because like there's, there's a lot of them. Um, but you do uh, expose, let's go through everything that's going to happen. So expose weakness okay. or flaw. And... There's a lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, we'll make sure to shift the spotlight right after. So, so be fine. Uh, so I'm just going over it as soon as Google Sheets will let me scroll. Come on. You can do it, Google. I believe in you. Okay. No, I did it too much. Okay. Uh, they will tell you more than they wanted to and expose a weakness or a flaw. So as that happens, you can see like, as, as you burn through the insects, you notice that inside, um, the whole point of an insect is they're supposed to just have exoskeletons, they're supposed to be nothing but squishiness inside. But you see instead that they have these elongated, stretched out human-like skeletons. Like you realize that there's, like each one had some sort of like human aspect inside of them, you realize that these bugs were created. They're not the same as the ones Daya saw. Um, like they were meant to mimic those bugs, but they're not exactly the same. All right. Yeah. So you. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anathema, you know, except yeah. that I'm, I'm just a big power thing right yeah. now. So <laughs> yeah. Just so sort of rolls across the room whether anyone understands it or not yeah yeah but it also means that because they have these this human-like source that they are susceptible um, mm. to things like humans are like emotions and bargains and things that Daya is very good at basically all right um, <laughs> they have all of those things they're not just like um but yeah they do have something um and aside from that, so you get that plus because like just, just to be like uh, transparent about how the moves work, because you didn't choose avoid reprisal, or harm or cost, there is going to be some mm -hmm. of that. And then plus there's collateral damage. So I think what that looks like is the church like aspects, because they're all just shattered like pieces of a church, they start to respond 
and they start to move towards you, Ada, and you realize it's kind of like that first time when, when this when you were tr when they tried to contain you in a statue. There's something in this dimension that's trying to push you back into that form. But as that happens, you can see it's working. Like Dax is slowly being released because you've burnt away all of that. But the church aspects start to move closer towards you. The rocks are forming around you and they're starting to take on your face like a reverse Iron Maiden as they come close uh, towards you. And so please mark a condition mm -hmm. to try to keep them at bay. Which condition do you think it is? Jeez. I think I think it just has to be hopeless because mm -hmm. this is how it always happens. Here we go. But yeah, okay. So ah, one away from the breaking point. Exciting. Um, so it's okay. Someone just has to like you know reach out for the light with you. You'll be okay. <laughs> Ooh, I have like a minus four with that at this point. <laughs> yeah. So good luck to them. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else can roll for you instead. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, but so everybody else, so Daya, Thorne, you see this happen really quickly, like Ada just like is propelled forward, breaks apart, uses their power, uh, kills like half of the, the insectoids. But you also see that strange human skeleton that's all stretched out and creepy like right before they're burnt away. Um, and Daya, you recognize this bullshit. Uh, you've seen cultists do this to themselves every so often where they take on new forms or they or they they are victimized in some way and they're used for someone else's ritual and power this just you can recognize the stench anywhere of these poor souls who had no idea what is happening so daya what do you do um so i think he realizes, like you said, these aren't these aren't the same. These are people that have shaped themselves into these things. But nature follows shape in ways that people never really expect. And so, I think Daya he steps forward slowly towards where where the majority of the remaining bugs are. Uh, and with each step, his his form stretches, elongates until he's towering over them in a thin skeletal way like the, the uh, spirit from the other world. Uh, and his eyes uh, start to glow with power as he sings a song that just comes to him with the voice as he pulls it up, this ancient language. And it's not really words, it's not really commands, but it's this feeling of you are in danger and I am safe. Uh, and he's hoping that the, the form they've put them in will be enough to, to resonate with this like authority and power that he's bringing. Are you um, asking them to I, worship you? Um, I, I'm not quite, I'm, I'm uh, using uh, lies and charm to unleash the dark. Nice, nice. We'll All right. See. There may be stuff in there. We'll see what happens. All right. How much are you going to um, invest? Mm -hmm. uh, I think for a full on uh, pretending to be a god, uh, I can take four darkness for feeling that others are beneath me. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I'll spend two of them on this. Seven, eight, nine. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, and this is Unleash the Dark, right? With uh, with honey yep, yep. tongue and clouded minds. Uh, so you can choose one from below even on a miss. And because you hit perfectly on the move, yeah, you wield the dark district position and choose two. two. Yes. Nice. Um, but yeah, I will say once again, just for the sake of transparency, if you don't choose avoid reprisal, or harm or cost, it'll probably be a condition or something similar. I gotcha. Uh, I think I'm going to pick one from each list. Uh, 
and I'm going to go with they are tempted to worship me, and I will nice. confuse them for some time. Ooh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, and so what does that look like when they respond to you? Um, and I have to ask, is this the first time you've done this, or are you very good at this because you've done it several times before? Um, I mean... Uh, I've certainly impersonated an elder being or god or two, but this is the first time with with this particular voice and mask. It's, a, it's something I'm not familiar with, but it's a tactic I've done. Perfect, perfect. Um, I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think I think as he he speaks, they they calm. Their, I, I imagine they've sort of gone frantic in the destruction and cosmic waves. Um, they, as, as he sings, they, they calm some, they, they start to swirl in towards him. Uh, they start to wander around him in sort of a, a mandala effect of that, that pattern uh, over and over again. And they don't, I don't think they shrink down to the, the size of the, the real bugs, but they, they calm down, they get smaller and get a little bit more manageable. Right, and, uh, and as they do this, they start moving around in that same ritual pattern that you saw. As they move around you, you can tell like you've activated something where they just follow, um, for the lack of a better word, like the initial programming that they were made to follow, right? Um, so they're compliant, they're complacent, uh, and they, they're completely enthralled by you, and yet, why does it, what, what like uh, unwelcome emotion rises in you? What condition do you mark? I, I just want to say that as uh, Daya goes through this, the light on Patrick's screen is reflecting his eyes in a very interesting, like, you know, I am at the height of my power. <laughs> I oh, know. I, trust me, I have effects going. It can get, it can get crazier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So I mean, we can we, we can need, go we full need, on here, people. We we need to have a session where you get away with doing that the entire session. <laughs> <laughs> putting it in my anyway, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, no. I I love playing around with these. Um, <laughs> ba, 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 there I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. Uh, I think, I think forlorn. Um, I think I'm, I'm singing home and comfort and peace to them. And they're responding by, by giving me all of their pain, their terror, both in this moment and, you know, the sort of existential level of I've given my soul and body over to this thing that was probably a deal I was not prepared for. Oh yeah yeah perfect perfect and as that happens you start to see like one of the bugs comes up to you and like brushes against you for a moment and you can see that it was just this human passing by near the apartments uh, in the evening and someone or something like drew them in. So you know that there's an active force that is drawing in these souls. Um, and you can sense like a lot of anger coming from the other side. Mm. But yeah. And so, okay. So the bugs have been, <laughs> the ones that were not destroyed are now deeply in love with Daya, right? So, um, and Thorn, you see, the man that got the whole time, he's just been watching, very amused. Like he's looking at Daya, he's looking at Ada, then he looks back at you and he says, you're not like, you're not like the others. There's something very special about you. And he smiles. I can't wait to visit the division and meet the rest of you. What do you do, Thorne? 
Uh, oh, sorry, you're muted, my love. I, I narrow my eyes at him and I say, was that a threat? And uh, he smiles. Well, I just want to get closer to all of you. Um, let's see. Um, oh my God. Let's see. Um, I think I might have to react violently again. <laughs> um, but overreacted violence. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, overreacted violence. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, if he hit five I again, though, mm -hmm. can I can I blow his power back at him, or would that not make any sense? Yeah. What do you mean by blow your power back at him? Because I I, I drained him, right? Or is yeah. it just? Mm -hmm. Well, you drained him, but like like I said, like uh, you can try to find out where the source is and destroy that. That's something you can definitely do. So he caught keep drawing. Sure. Yeah. yeah, sure. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find a move for that one. Sure. So specifically, you're trying to, but it feels like it's just a direct attack. So I think unleash the dark. Yeah, yeah unleash the dark. All right. Um, roll plus darkness, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. And how much would you like to? <laughs> uh, spend. I just saw the I just saw the chat. Yes, punch him in the power cord. That is correct. Okay, I'll roll plus two then. Sure. C roll. I created a roll. Um, Rolling. That is. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, no, it is. A, I rolled a five. I'm sorry, a four. <gasps> <clears throat> what is going on? So six. What happened? <laughs> Give me. Uh, fetch me my dice. <laughs> this is what happens in you. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Okay. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Um, the four, so it's not even, yeah, it's not even anything. Go, go. Yeah, yeah. Is it a four total or like six? It's a four total. <laughs> it's a four total? Okay. <laughs> that's really bad. Okay, so, wow, that's really Keep bad. It... <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm just so amused. Okay. Um, so, first off, uh, I think as you try to look for that power source, as you feel the power rise within you, like what does it look like? Is you're using your colossal strength or your shadow? Sorry, a little bit of a rewind. Can I mm -hmm. can I can I say that when you unleash the dark through anger and violence, you may choose to take three dark tokens of darkness before doing so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So technically speaking, I have six darkness tokens. Oh, yeah, but if you spend it immediately, it'll be because um, you spent two, right? Am I not? Yeah, so it'll be, yeah. yeah, so mm -hmm. could I try to, but this happens before the move. Mm -hmm. So is it okay if I burn through five? Oh, you can only roll maximum of plus three. Got it. No problem. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I will do the math corresponding your end. You know, go send me my fate. <laughs> Okay, so you were using your shadow control, I assume, or colossal strength to... Um, yeah, uh, I was going to, I was going to use my shadow control. And so as you, as you shift through it, um, that's when you hear his voice say like, well, if you just wanted to get to know me better, you could have just said so. And he comes in closer places his lips upon yours uh the wings wrap around you and you can see that everybody else sees the upper half start to split off and then these blackened shadowy tendrils exude from both ends and start to completely wrap up thorn uh and then mananangal turns at everyone else and smiles and says we'll be seeing you soon Yay. 
Just so you know, I'm, 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 I'm punching him the whole way up, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no worry. It's just a quick kiss. Not even a real kiss, you know. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to give everyone else a chance to make sure they don't completely get away, of course. Uh, but which condition do you mark, my love? Um, let's see. That's going to be great. Um, I would say raging. Yeah, makes sense. Absolutely. So Daya and uh, Ada, you see like everything is starting to buckle from that point of reality. And you can tell that the Mananagal is just going to tear through it, <clears throat> taking Thorn. Um, yeah, oh my gosh, we didn't even get to see where the power source is. You could try to XP find where the power source is. Mm -hmm. XP on a miss, right? Uh, did we do that with this group? I'm trying to remember because like, I'm experimenting with two different groups. Like, I, do we have XP and a miss in this group? This is what I get for running four groups at the same time. I should write this down. I would personally love XP on a miss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's just go As ahead and do that. It's kind of my MO. In this <laughs> maybe, we should ask, maybe we should ask Lowell. <laughs> If you were okay, but you know what? I'm fine. I'm fine. We can have like, um, so technically earlier Adam missed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Ada and Thor, go ahead and mark. No problem. No problem. <laughs> it's fine. I, I, I am a I, kind of benevolent GM. <laughs> you remember, babe, those players who who would outlevel me like three or four times, and I would never get anything because I kept rolling. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. In our mask game, oh, we had God. one player who leveled up three times in one session. It was very bad. Uh, <laughs> he could not get a single good roll. Uh, yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so Daya and Ada, you see what's happening. You can see everything caving in. Uh, Daya, the, the insects move around you to protect you, right? You can tell that they're holding on to this section of reality. And Ada's sister Dax is almost completely free as the, as the rest of that, that exoskeleton insect stuff pulls off of him. And you can see like his face is like slightly changed for a moment and then it reverts back to what he's always looked like. Um, but you can see that the sword that he carries on his back, it's completely eaten away, worn away by this bug stuff. But yeah, and what do you do about Thorn? Oh, sorry, Sherry. Oh, you're muted, Sherry. Sorry. What do I do about Thorn? Um, I think I do the only thing that I can because she's given over to despair. So I think she creates, she essentially with her last bit of energy she sort of shapes herself as a sword and gives it to sister dax because dax has lost their sword amazing so, how is that yeah so, so i think that also triggers that's one like of one of my things yeah um ask someone to use your power as they see fit mm -hmm. Ooh, nice how many tokens do you take for that two is plenty yeah perfect perfect um yeah i think that would be really cool like as it happens the sword is that same pulsating light mm -hmm. and the thing is is because i took the dark the doomed move together we are pure oh so we're tied together <gasps> so i mean dex is supposed to agree yes, but yes. <laughs> they already have so <laughs> it's a done deal <laughs> I love this. I love this. Let me just, this is the first time I'm seeing this move in action. So uh, let me just pull it up on the screen. So when you take this move, declared who you're bound to by fate. So in this case, it's Sister Dex, uh, if they agree, which is uh, what they do. Uh, ooh, they declare what shared fate awaits you both. Um, hmm. <laughs> I can hear Matthew behind the me. He's just going, mm, oh, this is dude. a cool move. I know. I was like, oh, this oh. is every teenage girl's dream. <laughs> I know, right? Let's all be doomed. Let's, Let's every... all be doomed together. <laughs> Yay! I wrote this based on the shenanigans that uh, falling waters would get into. <laughs> With that, with that fate move. Anyway, so that's based on. Oh, dar oh, darling, you need to put you need to put this in our in your dystopian YA novel uh, RPG. Oh my, oh gosh. my god, Jamie, that that thing showed up on my timeline because of you, and I watched it for like half an hour, just over and over again. It's so, it's so great. I've been writing the playbooks in my head. Are a metaphor. 
that's that's the name that's the name of the game these pomegranates are a metaphor i wanted to name the game (laughs) a sword fiend game but yeah so i realized this has the same energy Um, not not meant to i didn't do that on purpose uh but yeah so i think uh, I'll, I'll just read through the rest of it. The two of you are connected always, sharing emotions, thoughts, and unable to stray too far from each other. You can always mark doom to have them appear on the scene, regardless of logic or plausibility, though they may have suffered to do so. Um, but yeah, and then so the rolling part is only if you want to break the faith. Uh, and, that and why you. would I? I absolutely <laughs> believe in it. <laughs> so what happens is as the sword starts to form... Uh, Sister Dax looks down and, and his hair is like flowing behind him. The face shifts again for a moment to look like you, Ada, then shifts again back to their own face. And they close their eyes. And as they pull the sword together, like they, they go into this prayer like motion. Uh, and they say, Our fate is one that will remake God. Our fate is one that will remake heaven itself. Our fate is one that will bring upon deliverance onto those who have dared defy the apocalypse that awaits the deserving. And so uh, as the sword starts to, starts to shine, um, it's kind of like a dark magical girl moment. <laughs> I realize I yeah. get to be the sword. Of the yes. dark magical girl. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, it's the best role. Yeah. <laughs> and like so, that power just completely uh, shifts around them. Uh, and and Sister Dax says, "Ada, you and I will shine brightly as the darkest days come together." always and they pick up the sword and they move through it and they cleave through like they shift forward and at first it looks like they're going through that same cut that the Mananangal has but then it goes upwards and Thorn you hear Sister Dax say Mickey I return to you what was taken from you as the Mananangal is just completely like it's so quickly it's just that moment where it looks like nothing happened and then there's just this bit of light that trails down as it just very slowly like just splits in another way uh and it happens so quickly that the Mananga doesn't even have time to react to it uh and as it falls apart um all these little bugs that was inside that was inside the flesh start to skitter away and Thorn, you hear this voice um you haven't met mickey yet but uh but ada would recognize it you mickey hear a soft Mandel voice that hmm? sorry matthew uh, is that is that the one holding me up? yeah the one holding you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so aren't i in midair yes you are don't worry sister Dax I, I is there I'm to catch hot. you no you have wings uh, i'm looking at your picture the wings can't fly yeah, i did I didn't say I wasn't going to cry. <laughs> In fact, I was setting that up to be awesome. <laughs> okay. So your sister and I can catch it or you can fly. No worries. You can be awesome. The suspense. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's like you can wear a bomber jacket without actually, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so true. You can have these yeah. wings that are, that are just purely accessories. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah um, I was gonna unfold them dramatically. Excuse yes, me. don't worry. I'll give you that moment. I'll give you that moment. Let okay. me just give you the rest of this clue. So, so all basically, right, right, right. you hear um, Ada recognizes the voice of Mickey uh, saying, "I'm sorry, but I just don't. I just can't be with you in that way." And then everything fades. Um, Ada, you do hear sounds of Mickey being hurt before that fades away too. Oh no. And then so, uh, do you have your moment, Thorn, that I almost took away from you? Is that what happens now? Thorn, Matthew, do you have your unfurling wings moment? Oh, unmute. Yes. What does it look like? 
Um, no, so I see as the bugs burst. Excuse me. As the bugs burst and Thor like sort of falls and starts spinning in the air like uh, a downward pirouette. That's when the wings sort of like unfurl, you know, uh, in a very dramatic top, you know, aerodynamic fashion. And then he glides, you know, downwards to where his friends are. Perfect, perfect. Um, and then that's when uh, Sister Dax reaches the ground themselves. Like they just, using Ada's power, they're able to glide down as well. And they release the sword. And what happens right. to the sword, Ada? Um, I think essentially when, when Dex releases it, it actually sort of uh, does this, uh, this thing where it goes up in the air and it comes back down through Dex. Um, and um, then you see Ada kind of energy like inner form standing right behind Dex. Like, because she doesn't have her shell, and she's just got that thing where she's sort of curled up right behind him. And then that's when all uh, all of you hear this voice coming through gritted teeth. I can't hold this together, like the whole time. <laughs> and you realize it's Asha then sounding uh, very upset and put upon. Is there any way I can help Ash Asha then? Uh, I think before we get to that, this is a good part to take our first break. Um, Dang it. <laughs> so I'll see you all in 10 minutes. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, and so uh, we're back. I pressed the right button, which is good. So uh, as, as the group sees Ashton um, holding together the dimensions, making sure that they don't implode on each other. Uh, I think a good question is, Daya, what are you going to do with the bugs who are worshiping you now? Um, well, I, I mean, I'm definitely going to bring them out with me and uh, I'm going to direct them carefully through the portal, making sure as many of them as possible rub up against Ashadan's legs. Yes, and the whole time there's just this meow, 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 kind of sound going from Ashton. <laughs> Perfect. I think when, when Daya himself comes through, he's still like, until he crosses over the, the portal line, he's still in that like tall, elongated form. So he's just being, again, as awkward as possible. Like it's, your, your wing is really, if you could just make this a little bit more convenient. Some of us have long limbs, you know. Oh, yes, of course. I'm so sorry that I can't make myself smaller for you. I'll make sure to take care of that next time. And then, uh, but yeah, Thorn, I remember right before we went to break, uh, you were concerned about something? Uh, I was wanted to help a Ash Ashardlon. Uh, Ashardlon, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm mangling his name. Uh, Ashardon? Ashardon, yeah. Uh, hold things together. Yeah, and how do you want to do that? Do you want to use your shadow control or? Um, I was hoping to invoke my colossal strength, but I don't think that that's really useful in this situation. So definitely shadow control. Mm -hmm. Well, we could I, could, I could see why colossal strength would be like a Thor situation where you're holding together. Um, yeah. Something, no worries. Um, but yeah, and so, uh, but just for the sake of transparency, because Lowell's not here, I'm also perfectly fine with him being stuck in between two dimensions and so he can pick up the character next time. <laughs> but we can have Thorn um, help him out a bit, no worries. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. and so Ada, um, you see like Sister Dax, uh, he's slowly coming to, and he, he looks a little confused you can tell like he remembers everything, but it's 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 almost like he wasn't sure if it was really him. Uh, and they look mm. at the portal and they look back at the church, the broken church, um, and they look at the pieces that almost controlled you, right? Like if you hadn't turned into a sword, they would have mm -hmm. they would have trapped you again. And Sister Dax looks at you and says, 
should I should I stay here? I don't I don't know if I should go back. I I feel different. Ada says, I'm going to go back. I would like it if you did too. And he stops and he looks around. Yes, I feel I feel like we have to stay together now. I can't explain okay? why. And Sister Dax says, I think I joined the broken crucifix because I didn't want to be alone. So yes, I that's okay. And you can see like he's he's trying to like pull back the the by the book kind of uh, facade Ooh. that has that has protected him this whole time. Uh -huh. And he, he takes in a deep breath. And then uh, he looks for the Bible manual. He can't find it. He's trying to not panic. And uh, he says, well, um, according to the appendix pertaining to traveling between dimensions, I do believe we're doing this correctly. And yes, we, sh we should return. Yes, we should return. She says, she mimics it. And she sort of starts to rebuild her form, you know? So it's again, that's that kind of, on top of her light and energy, you just kind of see that light porcelain shell form around her and it gets thicker and the light kind of slowly dims. And then it sort of does this, you know, transformation. So it looks like skin, but with all those tattoos. And, um, and then as an afterthought, she has clothes. And that's just... <laughs> yeah, there's a moment where Sister Dax is like, uh-oh, must cover. <laughs> Like oh Ada, <laughs> modesty. <laughs> what? <laughs> and uh, I saw in the chat. So Thorn, do you think you have a copy of the Bible manual of the Sisters of the Broken Crucifix? Did maybe Sister Teresa give it to you before? Or yeah, and uh, I would say that. Uh, well, what I would like to say is that Dax maybe dropped it somewhere, and you know, I you know, I think it's just within my characters, like you know habits to pick it up and yeah. so when he when when Dax looks for it you know I hand it to him and say you know you drop this yeah makes sense makes sense absolutely uh yeah I make, um, I'm meaning it as a romantic gesture <laughs> okay noted noted but uh sister Dax uh, the GM understands the keeper understands but sister Dax does not um so sister Dax takes the bible mm -mm. uh and says oh um uh, Yes, thank you. That is most kind of you. Uh, mm -hmm. And so everybody, because you helped out Sister Dex, uh, go ahead and take one bond on uh, Sister Dex. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, because you all rescued. It could have gone very, very badly. Um, but now, you know, he's fate bonded to an incredibly powerful monster. So that's definitely better than- Yeah, that's definitely right. the best, yes. Before they walk uh -huh. into this dimension. Yes. <laughs> Everything's going so well. <laughs> For Anna. <laughs> so as you step out of the dimension, Ashton, you hear Ashton swearing about something under his breath. Um, oh, that sounds like, that's so Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he says, uh, I'll join you shortly. I need to. Only I can take care of this, obviously. Um, as he as he pulls everything together, and uh, but he's he's shooting daggers towards Daya. Like, can you please keep your insects off of me? There's one in particular that's like, ooh, cool, like going up against Ashadan's face. <laughs> I know they're so cuddly, aren't they? I think I'm gonna keep them around. You're going to what? See you later, Ashadan. As, a rush, 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 as the dimension closes around him, <laughs> as he fixes things to attend to it. Um, and so you notice, like, Daya, as you go back into this dimension, the bugs start shrinking down again. Um, and they start to form into that same ritual like pattern. Uh, and one of them, one of the bugs, actually becomes big enough to swallow up the other ones to become the strange little insect pouch for you to carry around on your person. Um, 
Daya, who is not phased by this at all because he's a celestial being and whatnot, and not afraid of little crawly bugs, uh, <laughs> will pick that up without being all squirmy or weird or even any of that. And sort of, he will look at it a little bit because, you know, bug purse doesn't really go with his outfit overly well. So he'll, um, <laughs> I think he'll uh, uh, do a little glamour over it uh, and, and change it into like a, a fanny pack. A, a, a nice leather one, black, sleek to go with the whole outfit sort of vibe. Perfect, perfect. You hear Sister Dawn from the locket saying, you're not going to keep those things, are you? You're not even here, so I don't see how this is any of your concern. Fine, fine. But, but you'll start painting insects. Just you wait and see. That's how it's going to happen. One day you bring the insects home. Next thing you know, your, your home is filled with paintings of insects. If I wanted art critiques, I would go to... Well, okay, you're a really appropriate person for art critiques, but that's not the point here. And so when the three of you look around, so you come back out at the chapel, which is an open air... Um, instead of the typical closed building chapel. Uh, it's this big garden um, and the, the paintings of the governor generals are, uh, governor generals are there on the side. Um, but you notice that, uh, that the apartments are like, all of the lights are off, which is not what it was like uh, when you first came through. And you can hear what sounds like the sounds of battle coming from the other side of the building. And Daya, you recognize the war cry of the elder from the other side. And as the three of you start to move closer, uh, you can see like signs of battle everywhere, like parts of the garden here, like some of them have been raised down. You can see like where Ashton did the tower readings before in that common area, things have been moved aside. There's like blood splatter everywhere. What do you do? Um, so sounds of battle, do you mean like gunfire or like hand-to-hand like -hand fighting or? Sounds like hand-to-hand -hand fighting. You can hear- um... Like swords clashing or, or mm -hmm. fists flying? Yeah, there's some swords, but it's mostly fists. You can hear like flesh tearing and screaming. Is this Wusha? No, that's later tonight, love. Your your Wusha game is later tonight. <laughs> um, no, we'll uh, definitely uh, move towards that. What? What? How long have we even been gone? Oh, and no. mm -hmm. and that's when you see uh, Sister Teresa comes out from behind one of the walls and she looks like she's been through a lot. Her habit is like torn in several places. There's this huge gash on top of her head and the blood keeps pouring down and there's ash all over her face. Like she's been in a fire and she looks at the three of you and she says, where have you been? It's been two weeks. Two what? Anna, I think, looks at Sister Dax. Does Dex have their sword back? No, because you're their sword now. Excellent. I'm like, OK. <laughs> She's so relieved she gets to turn into a sword again. Uh, <laughs> Does that happen right now? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh -huh. So I think what happens is you see Sister uh, Sister Dax like move towards where the sword is supposed to be, realizing they don't have it, but when they pull it back, your form starts to glow again and reform into the sword. And Sister Dax starts whispering to themselves, of course, I, I should have taken into account the temporal distortion as we move through the different layers of reality. Uh, and that's when Sister Teresa rolls her eyes and sort of like punches him in the shoulder don't act like this is not your first time going through a portal. Okay, Sister Dex, it's fine. You know, it's you're okay. Um, and you can see she she glares at Thorn instead. You should have known better though. This is not your first time. <laughs> Do you just make that face at her? <laughs> no, of course not. I don't make that face at all. 
<laughs> Shut up. This is just my face. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, Thorne, in response? Mm. And what would you ha- and what would you and what did you expect me to do? Well, I expected you to not easily be, be goaded by whatever that creature was and get pulled into a different dimension, but apparently that's asking too much of you. And she says this, but you can tell she's just happy to see that you're back, Thorn. Um, she may oh, be wow. hard I was, on you. I, mm-hmm. I, I was ready to, for her to push my labels, honestly. <laughs> different game, different game. <laughs> But yeah, and so Sister Teresa looks around and says, we don't have much time. The elder is holding them back as best as they can. I, and she stops and realizes, oh, I have to catch up everybody. Okay, just just follow me for now and keep low. We can't draw their attention as much as possible. And as- No, it's fine. It's, you know, we've had a lot of things happen to us too. Ashadon's trapped between dimensions. Ada's a sword now. All sorts of things have happened. Sister Dax was flying earlier. We're not boring. And Sister Dax holds up the sword almost apologetically. Like, uh, yes, um, yes. Uh, Well, but according to uh, protocols 562, Subletter A, it is all right for Sisters of the Broken Crucifix to gather new power uh, if it is. And then you can see like he's struggling to explain that it's okay to have a power from a monstrous being that is not. Yeah, and Dex (laughs) keeps doing things like that now recently too. Just, I don't know. There are all sorts of, I think he's just making up rules at this point. No. (laughs) No, and I think it's at that point that Anna like gives him of, you know, like fiery wings too, you know, just in case he needs them. Yeah, uh, and it just, it just goes up there and Sister Dax looks even more apologetic, like um, <laughs> trying to like shrink. And Sister Teresa just like, ah, okay. Um, and so she uh, says, okay, quickly follow me. And then she leads you towards a wall and she's trying to look for something and she presses up against it and the secret corridor opens up it's not the same as like elder duhas where it was like magical and stuff like this just looks like something that was built in uh for people to move around it feels very mundane uh in comparison she hits it and as you move towards it you see more of those ada you recognize those fetus like things that you had burned off of franklin wolf's back except they're much bigger like they're about like three feet long at this point like these huge fetus sacks that look like they had been um destroyed or killed before they could fully form okay so they've already been destroyed like this particular good. set yeah okay so, good th- yeah mm-hmm. come back and burn those later it's true it's true and so sister Teresa tries to catch you up as quickly as possible as you move through the corridor she explains that uh shortly after you left um bad omens started to appear and the next night was friday and you remember like the the murders had happened every friday since that Mm -hmm. time uh but instead of a murder what happened was more than half of the population of mananga had just fallen asleep and she could no one could wake them up no one knew what was going on uh and then within a few days that's when a lot of them started to have these like what happened to franklin wolf like along their backs there was that thing where they were forced to give birth to these strange fetus like creatures they were able to save most of the mananga who were forced because they saw what happened to franklin wolf so they were prepared um to do what they could but it's still pretty bad so they've been fighting off these like fetus like mananga creatures for days and nights now it's been an ending uh, and they're all, even though the Mananangal are completely powerful, it's only the elder who's really a good warrior, um, the best warrior, because the rest have not, uh, don't have those lifetimes of experience of battle. Uh, most of them are just call center agents. They're just YouTubers, you know, they're not meant to be <laughs> like fighting off. Um, but she's especially worried about Mickey because Mickey was one of the first to fall asleep and he never woke up and nothing happens to his body either. So she's taking you to where he is now because she suspects that he's at the center of all of this somehow. Um, Because she also recognized what was going on with that other Mananaga, but she hasn't been able to put 
two and two together yet. That's okay, neither have we. <laughs> <laughs> and so she finishes up the explanation, she's back at, um, you realize like you were able to like go up through the secret passages in the building. You come out of a closet that leads directly to Sister Teresa's cramped apartment. Uh, you can, uh, it smells a lot like cigarettes and whiskey. You can tell she's been like stress smoking um, through this, which is, you know, um, fine considering what everyone is going through. And Mickey is laid out on the bed, um, but he's so still. It's almost like he's not alive. You can barely see him breathing. And uh, Sister Teresa turns to you and says, I don't know what to do. The elder has been able to hold them back. They haven't been able to reach us just yet. And once again, you can hear the elder like screaming or their war cries um, down below. Um, you can even hear the sound of like stone breaking. You know, the elder is using all of their strength in this battle. But Daya, you know that they're not as strong as they used to be, even if they try to say otherwise. So what do you do? Do you want to try to theorize again what the heck is going on or? Mm -hmm. So all of this is at the stem of it. What is being tapped on are, is people who want things from the Monaco. They want money, they think they deserve this. Uh, Mickey's client who wants him to be his, those things. It's, it's like flowing through something. I think that the intent is to focus all of that so that enough, how do you say, uh, horrors come down upon the Monagal that they actually attempt to beseech the old spirits and open up the pathways to the new false ones for the, these new things. So it is that sort of thing of trying to drive them to open up those pathways. But I think that it's actually all of these, what do you say, all of this um, threats, the things that they want, the debt, all of that stuff, it has to flow through like a law office or something where they've promised, you know, that they can collect these things or a debt collector. And it's like this debt collector who has taken all of these, these jobs Ooh. on the side, including a kind of like, you know, sure, I can do these things. I mean, it's not a debt debt, but I can certainly arrange this so that they can't argue. They have no other alternatives. And, and that's what this is, is moving through. And it's, of course, agent of the inquisitors or whatever. Yes. Does that seem so, reasonable? So we think these these bugs that we had like classified as like cultists that had changed themselves that maybe there were people that owed things this debt collector and when they came in to try and like make a deal with him when they weren't good for money anymore he would start to turn them yeah it's just all of this all of the tools it's all about debt it's, it's about feeling owed not about or you know that's that a debt is felt to be owed so like there's people who want to collect from the Monongal, even though they're really not owed anything. But it's that deep feeling of entitlement to something. And that's nice because we're, you know, we've been dealing with these sort of like slums and poorer areas where this guy is just like draining people until they have no more money to give him, turning them, and then suddenly there's a new apartment open for lease for someone else fresh and full of blood to be drained. That makes so much sense. My God, too real. <laughs> Matthew behind the mute is saying, my God, too real. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> good stuff. I agree. I feel like this is a very good theory. Um, but yeah, so so we are currently at a plus two. Um, do we want to roll with the plus two? I, I think we got another clue when we were in the church, though. Um, so, and that was the mickey like the thing that we could hear with mickey and mickey was going i just can't be with you that way so we can hear that refusal and that thing and that's kind of what brought it all together i think was sure 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 do you want to roll to officially grasp the key to see if there's any other complication attached to it or oh uh, you might not want me to be rolling anything right now since i am what is known as conditioned up so my, my <laughs> 
<laughs> do you want my to apologies roll? Thorn, you were you were right up with the, yeah. the same penalty there. Yeah. Wait, which which penalties do I have? Which bonuses do I have? Let's see. I made sure I tried to make sure no one had a minus to grasping keys for any condition. Because... <clears throat> I have plus two to grasping keys driven, oh, and I have go. I have six darkness tokens. Oh, didn't you spend some of those? Um. Also. Uh, as summoned, I may always choose to gain darkness when I. That's when you unleash. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so only, so sometimes I, I get angry. Gave me three, and gaining darkness as the summon, uh, I got at least two, and I spent two of them, so I gained three back. So how many do you have in? Six. Total. Total. Oh, oh no! We have to cover up your souls though. All right, collect my soul if you want to. <laughs> well, we didn't catch it last time, so go ahead and you can use it for the roll if you like, if you want to. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to be opening the grasping keys move just mm -hmm. to be sure I understand. Sure. It yeah, no problem. Let me read it out. Um, so, because it's been a while. Uh, when you start oh, here. Oh, it's right worry. here under my, it's under my favorite ability, Unleash the Dark. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah, I'm just reading out for people too who are listening or watching. So when you search for clue, okay. investigate the signs of the apocalypse or use your powers of darkness to gather information, describe how you're doing so, and row plus darkness. So um, I assume you're trying to put together, I unfortunately see the meme of the blonde woman with the math calculations. But anyway, you're trying to put together what happened with the with the other Manalangal and what you heard. Is that what's happening, Thorne? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm confused. Are we? Are, we're, we're theorizing, aren't we? Yes. We were. We were. But then we can always have another key just to be on the safe side to roll with a plus three. So that's what we're doing. All right. Sure. Okay. Go. Okay. Yeah. Um. Let's do it. So roll first to grasp keys. All right. That is a nine. With nice. Perfect. I don't, yeah, and I'm willing to spend this is a the... high, high roll, isn't it? Oh, you, yeah. no, this is at Grasping Keys. You're still trying to hit that sweet spot. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just yeah. hit it. Uh, you uncover a key of the apocalypse, which is good because no complications. Absolutely yeah, the perfect. keeper of doors will tell you. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, as you are listening and putting it together and trying to make sense uh, of what's happening, that's when you find. Um, next to Mickey's body, there's this strange, like, for a moment, it looks like crystals, like these pure white crystals, but then you realize they're huge chunks of salt. And this is something that you saw, Thorne, a long time ago. You've heard of it. Um, Dai has probably seen it uh, himself in person, but this is something that's known as Mananga salt. So it's a human myth that pouring salt on the lower half of a Mananangal will make them unable to rejoin both halves. However, yeah. there is a salt that can be made from the hair of the Mananangal, but it's a difficult and dangerous process. It's poisonous to all beings. And you can see the salt is all over. Like it's coming out of like his mouth in little bits or under his fingernails. Like he's been affected by the salt in some way. Mm -hmm. So this is probably a sign of the debt collector that you were yeah. talking about, like this is what he uses as a weapon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like the, the first person, the first Mananangal they killed or they, they they injured, you know, they took the, the hair and made the salt from that mm -hmm. and then just kept using it subsequently, mm -hmm. you know, throughout every like mm -hmm. uh, Mananangal and, you know, every everyone that they collect from, they, that's more salt to make, you know, to, to, to produce. Exactly. Okay, so now we have a plus three to the roll. Um, I will say we still want to try to hit that sweet spot because I don't know in play test when I just tried to go for like, um, because we're so used to hitting the eight to 10 people got confused with the, okay. But anyway, we are officially unlocking Doom's door. So when any monster right. is ready to declare the truth of the apocalypse plans here, say what it is, which we went through, uh, roll plus the number of keys found minus the mystery's complexity. So our, our mystery is six, we have eight keys. So that means you have a plus three to the roll. So who wants to make the roll? Like, I know, I know, <laughs> I know Ada doesn't want to. Uh, Thor, do you want to do it again? Or does Daya want to try to make the roll? 
Um, if Daya doesn't want to do it, then I'll do it. But uh, what, what, what do you think, Daya? Do you have a? I'll uh, I'll do it. I can ruin right. things. You have a, you have a truth to declare. Um, I, I don't I, mind I, things I, being ruined as long as it's not me doing it. So. Nah. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Okay, so you have uh, a but yeah, three. it's, it's mm -hmm. for the debt collector. You see, that's where we went wrong before. We were trying to pin it on some politician, and it's you know, it's lower, it's grubbier than that. True, true. So it's always the middlemen, right? Well, that would be an eleven. Ooh, okay, so an eleven, we exactly hit the. But you know, it's <laughs> it's still better than a seven. I'm gonna say that. Uh, so on an 11 plus, the truth is complicated. The keeper of the doors will either add an unwelcome complication to the truth or present a dangerous opportunity to stall the apocalypse. Uh, I'm going to say, ooh. Not, 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 oh. the backseat G, not the backseat GM or anything like that, but like, I feel like both options are equally compelling, right? Like obviously, you know, I know you well enough to know that if you add, add an unwelcome complication to the truth, it's going to be super like compelling. But if you present a dangerous opportunity to stall the apocalypse, it's kind of like it's kind of like setting up the next session, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So that's genuinely interesting. Anyway, yeah, that that's how I understand the choices before you, O oh, keeper of doors. <laughs> but yeah, I think what happens is uh, as Daya, as you say this, like, you know, that it's about the debt collectors. Um, that's when you see, ooh. Daya, who do you owe to? You know this debt collector so well. How, where do you remember them from? It's, it's someone I wouldn't have thought would even be here because the last time I was here, the last time, uh, you know, when I was working with Elder Duel before was decades ago. He, if he was old enough, he should be long dead. Um, yeah, I go oh, names, terrible at names. No worries, we can help you with the names. I'm, I'm pulling up uh, my, my favorite Mando name generator. <laughs> so. It no worries. Uh, um, my, mm -hmm, go ahead. You have like a favorite yeah. direction for where the name is going? Um, I uh, I think he was working as like a, a pawnbroker then. And there was some relic, uh, some something with actual power and connections that had come through his shop and he knew what it was. Like he wasn't going to let it go without a hard deal. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. And unfortunately, like, uh, it was too much for for him. So, was he originally immortal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, and and as as you start to remember, I'm also looking up. A name. Uh, do, do, do. Cecile. Ooh, sure. That's always a cool dude name. Let me just write that down. So Cecile. Uh, and as you start to to remember this debt collector, um, you remember how the elder explained to you a long time ago that uh, that they would never deal with this debt collector, that they didn't trust them because the other elders who had, uh, they all mysteriously disappeared. And even though Cecile supposedly had nothing to do with it, you, you felt deeply like that wasn't true. Um, and the and you realize putting two and two together that the elder decided to take things into their own hands and take care of the debt collector themselves. But now they're back uh, and you're not sure how exactly. Uh, and as that starts to dawn on you, that's when you notice that the crystals, the salt crystals 
on Mickey's body, they start pulsating, they start growing bigger, and you can see they're eating away at Mickey very, very slowly. And that's when Sister Dax uh, starts panicking. They're still holding the sword, uh, but they whisper, Ada, what do we do? There's, you know, because Sister Dax doesn't understand that Ada is only good at destroying, right? So um, Sister mm. Dax completely believes you can do something about this situation. <coughs> Um, and I think that that she is just like she sees Dax and I think that she does kind of I mean she sees Mickey and she does sort of fall out of Dax's hands and in, into her form and you see her start of reforming herself and she literally does nothing else other than start picking up the salt and moving it away like it's it's something she, she's not human. The salt's not going to hurt her. Um, and But it's like, she doesn't know anything to do. So she's just going to do the most mundane thing possible at that moment, if that makes any sense, is to, to begin moving it. Um, but she's trying to figure out what's going on with Mickey. Like, why is it growing? Can she feel anything? Entreaties, prayers, that sort of thing. Yeah, and so that's when you realize that um as you're as you're pulling apart the salt it's like it's just tearing away parts of your flesh but it keeps regrowing because mm -hmm. this body is just something you thought of putting together right? right it's not it's not anything real um so it keeps burning away at you and you can tell that the salt is trying to like it's trying to preserve mickey it's trying to erode um, at his will, at his consciousness, but keep him perfectly preserved. And you realize it's because Mickey is part of someone's debt. Mickey is part of a bargain of some kind, a very powerful bargain. Um, and that's when Mickey struggles towards consciousness because you pulled away enough of the salt that he's, he's somehow able to break through and he recognizes you, Ada, and he places a hand on your cheek and he says, I'm sorry, I... Is all of this my fault? I just, I didn't want to put anyone else in danger. I, and you can see the salt is starting to form around his mouth again. Um, and, and she sort of reaches up as gently as she can and she goes, tell us what has happened so we can help. And that's when Mickey starts crying and he says, I fell in love with him. I shouldn't have, he's dangerous. But Cecile, he was so beautiful. I. I shouldn't have. And then he starts to fall asleep again. And you realize that his heart is wrapped up in, in Cecile right now. Like you recognize the signs of this. It's not real love. It's something that's been, that's been manipulated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the complic, yeah, go ahead. Oh, the complication, go ahead. Yeah, just to be really clear about what the complication mm -hmm. is, you can find the debt collector. You should be able to track him down because Daya has this, connection with him but the debt collector is intrinsically tied to the elder and mickey in some way if you hurt the collector you'll hurt the two of them too yes. so I, I think as as mickey starts to pass out again uh dia um he's like his face has gotten red or angry well he can't see he's wearing the the mask um but i think his uh eyes have been like glowing with anger um and he turns to Teresa and grabs her by the by the upper arm and says take me to her now take me to her duha she's dropping any pretense at a title and you can see sister Teresa's overwhelmed by what happened with Mickey, but looks to you, Daya, nods. I, she gave me this and they gave me this in, in case of an emergency. And I suppose this is one. And you can see like underneath the habit, there's this like beautiful necklace that's made out of wood, like just one perfect ring of wood that's beautifully carved into it. And Sister Teresa grabs it and breaks it under her hand and throws it down into the ground and it creates this portal of like greenery and and vines 
And you can hear the elder's voice on the other side. You wouldn't use this unless it was an emergency, Sister Teresa. In fact, I told you to never fucking use it. And you can tell it's, it was given before they had their falling out, probably. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you can hear the sounds of fighting and you can hear the elders voice is starting to break and pant but you can also hear flesh being torn and stuff like that so the elder is still able to hold on out on their own but you know and uh dia, dia will step through and as that happens you see sister Teresa kind of collapse a little bit you realize she had been depending a little bit on the power of that of that artifact in order to sustain her and she starts coughing and she immediately starts to light a cigarette and says, the rest of you go, I'll, I'll catch up. <sighs> like going into the cigarette, just, and, and smoking and, and coughing around the smoke. And I, I do think at that point, Anna goes, if we have to bring a, a debt collector to heal, we need Otter's, <laughs> I can't say his name all of a sudden. Asherden? Um, Asherden. What happened because, to us? We're all struggling with the name. <laughs> yeah, Ash. I should have said, because, because only the law can bring an Ursa to heal. And that's what Alamasu is, full lawful. So nice, nice. And I think that she'll establish that, give something to, to Sister Teresa to go. And then I think, um, I think she'll probably just take Sister Dax by the hand and walk with him to where we're going. If she needs to be a sword, she'll turn into one. Absolutely. And so uh, you can see Thorne that as the two of them, as the three of them go through the portal, Sister Teresa is placing new protections around Mickey. Um, and now that she's seen what can happen when the crystals are pulled and that it's safe, she starts to do the same thing in order to help Mickey, but she's not as strong as Ada. You can see how the salt is melting through uh, her fingers, but she's doing it anyway to keep removing the crystals. What do you do, Thorn? Um, oh, sorry, you're muted, my love. <laughs> sorry, I just saw in the chat to give her chopsticks. <laughs> it's true. You could do that. Uh, why not? Made, made why out not? of shadow, shadow chopsticks. You have shadow control. You can do that. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I'll give her shadow chopsticks. <clears throat> the darkness chopsticks. So we'll say that you create a tool. Um, you don't have to roll for yeah. this. This is something that's fairly uh, simple for you. Yeah, um, create But is it chopsticks or a glove or are you going to envelope her in the darkness? Like, what does it look like? Um, you know what? Yeah, um, since you said envelope in the darkness, I'm sort of like, uh, like creating a barrier around us or like a, a do, do, and, and then with the like right hand side of it it's where like these long um these two long like uh implements come out chopstick shaped i guess to you know pick at it and then throw the salt into the darkness perfect perfect all right and then i assume you're going to follow the others through the portal right after Yes, and uh, if we took a drink every time we said the word darkness, we would be plastered by <laughs> half an hour into the session. This is a true point about this game, yes. I used to have more <laughs> terms related to darkness. This is me controlling myself by this version <laughs> of the game, I have to point out. Like in the first in the first run center was like, there's a lot of darkness. <laughs> they all mean different things anyway. Um, but yeah, so you go through the portal. Uh, Daya, as you walk through it, it's almost like it's a similar sensation when you were led through to the shrine of the Mananangal, except the jungle is very close. The leaves are brushing up against you. Uh, you can feel all the bugs in that, you know, fanny pack just shivering with excitement. Uh, <laughs> you can sense their thoughts. And they, they refer to you as like, oh God, please, please let us, let us play. Um, in the jungle, but you step through it quickly, get to the other side and you see the elder is not in as bad shape as Sister Teresa, but it's still not great. Uh, a lot of their clothing has been soiled and torn from the many days of fighting. You can see their, their hair is still, you know, 
pulled up in this bun, but a few strands are loose. But what is most telling to you, Daya, is they no longer have the energy to sustain their glamour. So most of their monstrous form has come through. It's mostly teeth and this god face and they're permanently split in half and both sides are fighting like on their own. So one, the lower half is kicking ass and the other half is tearing things limb from limb, like from both sides. You can see like they're fighting off the fetus like creatures uh, that you suspected were, uh, that you knew were growing from the Madanangal, there are about six of them. They're like breaking out of their like fetus like sacks. The others are like torn apart and dead on the ground. Um, and you can hear the elder just screaming, I know he's here. He can't be too far from his magic. One of you is holding the debt collector. Give him to me. What do you do? Daya strides forward, still just like full of fury out of the portal. He reaches into the pack as he gets near the elder and just like scatters like seeds a handful of these bugs, whispering devour to them. And as he comes up to her, he says, Ardua, you knew, you knew the whole time what this was, didn't you? And she turns to look at you. I did what I had to. You did what you had to to cover your ass, to make sure that no one knew that all of this was your fault anyways. I came, I came here to deliver your power back to you, to bring your gods back to you. But you, you lied. You lied to me and you lied to your people. And so you'll have to buy it back now. And as he says that, he pulls at the crystal mask, which like there are bits of his charred flesh that come with it. And you can see like the lava that's flowing under his skin. And he holds yeah. it out and he says, here, I offer you your gods back. at such a fair price. All you need to do is call out my name and never speak to me. Know that you speak to your gods, you speak to your spirits, and my will of love. And you can see their face distorting in anger. You would dare, with all your power, imprison my ancestors and my gods as if they were your playthings? Is that what you would do after all I've done for you, Daya? I would save your people, something you've been unwilling to do. If you won't take this up, I'm sure there's someone else who would, and they would be oh so interested to hear where the Cecile came from why That's this mere mortal didn't die off when he was supposed to decades ago. And that's when the elder turns and says, it was an accident. I went in, I tore him from limb to limb. But Daya, if it's my fault, it's just as much as yours. He fed off the glamour that you gave me. Why do you think your glamour still looks so perfect until now? I made a deal with him. Things were done. He had been paid and we had what we needed. You're the one that wanted to remove a threat to your power to make sure that things were clear for you. And you see that she sighs and she looks to the side. Perhaps I was a fool to think we were still friends, that you would still understand me. I will not cling to that any longer. But yes, Daya, if you wish for my worship, for the sake of my people, you will have it. Can I roll call me master? Yes, let's see what it looks yeah. like. Um, 
I will I will definitely take the full pull from asking someone to worship me. How do I give him support? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and spend three on this because I want to make sure it succeeds. And it also would be entirely appropriate if this went way over the top. Let's see how it goes. We've been rolling really swinging, so. Oh, well, that's right in the middle. That's a uh, six plus three is nine. Wow. Perfect, perfect. All right, so on an eight to 10, you have claimed new worshipers. Choose one. Um, I want to say that the, uh, they'll create a place of worship and power in my name. So that there will be, you know, going forward, there will be a shrine in the elders' apartment. I think right there where her sacred weapons used to be. Ooh, nice, nice. Perfect, perfect. What does it look like when you claim the elder as one of your worshipers? How does their form change? Um, I think as she pulls the mask up to her face and puts it on um, the, the skin, like along the edges of her neck and then going back over her shoulders and outlining her wings uh, and starting at her nails and running down her fingers. Uh, these gems, these stones and diamonds start to sprout. Uh, so that she's edged. It's like this this mask is a part of her. Um, and, and when they pull it off, it's almost like they're missing a piece of themselves. Nice, nice. I like that. And as it happens, you can hear the elder sigh um, because it's just so much easier to worship than it is to take on your strength for yourself all these centuries as much as she is loath to do it. Um, and so as this is happening, I assume your bugs are happily eating away at the, at the things I'm, that we're I'm trying to- I'm certainly hoping so, because <laughs> I'm not paying those, those horror babies one bit of attention. <laughs> and so I think um, as Ada and Thorne come through, yeah, because it was Daya who went through first, right? Um, I'm going to say by the rules of drama and magic, the other two don't see what you did. Um, <laughs> don't see what you did to uh, the elder, if you're okay with that, if that's something you prefer, or unless you want them to see it, that's also fine. I mean, there's, uh, I, I, I like them coming in after the deal is done, but you know, there's Daya standing there with his exposed, burned face, and there's the elder wearing the mask. Right, so it's enough to put. Yeah, yeah I would, I would, I would say like you know, theoretically we would want to walk in before that happens, but it's more interesting that we come in after, and seeing. But it, but as we walk in, like you said, we see your face, so we like, oh, something's up. We don't know what, <laughs> but we just don't know what it. You know, we don't know what it is. Yeah, but is this the first time that you've claimed a worshiper in this fashion, Daya? Pretty sure Thorne has seen it happen more than once. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think it tends to go well. <laughs> That's one way to put it. But yeah, so, uh, and then Sister Dax comes through and looks shocked at the elder, looks at the rest of the, of the creatures, and Sister Dax turns to you, Ada, and says, I can sense him. I can sense that he's close. This is your power, isn't it? The reason why I'm able to do so? Just, you can hear the prayers and the entreaties. And Sister Dax turns and says, we don't have much time. He's about to collect another debt. Let's go. And I think this is actually like, unless someone wants to do something, this is a good point to end the session so that Asherton has something to like jump into. Yes. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so uh, I think we end on the last note of like Ada starting to glow 
next to Sister Dax, who as time passes, Sister Dax is looking less and less human. Like they're also taking on that like quality uh, of light like uh, that Ada has uh, underneath their skin. And we see the elder, uh, or, ooh, I don't think, I don't think they can use that term anymore. They're no longer the elder of the Manalinga, really. Uh, so Erduha uh, has that bejeweled mask on. Um, and we see thorns step through uh, darkness, bleeding off of them as the portal, the leaves and the jungle close up behind them. But we're gonna end on the bugs happily munching um, the fetuses, you're like, oh, our God is so good to us. We get to eat a buffet. This is a good time. <laughs> like, <laughs> so awesome. Ooh, do we have a song? Oh yeah, definitely. You want a darker by Leonard Cohen? Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna end on that note for sure. <laughs> okay, so with that, uh, I think we're gonna do end of session. I'm not gonna forget end of session. We're gonna do that. Okay, so. Situational moves, I almost always forget. I've run this game so many times. Um, so for every following we mark, um, for every following yes to the questions, we mark one XP. So the first question is, did you express your monstrous nature or your humanity? So let's go in character keeper order. Thorne, did you express your monstrous nature or your humanity? I would argue that uh, not much monstrosity came out of me today. Uh, it was mostly the humanity uh, in the sense of like uh, reacting to uh, with, you know, with emotion and um, sort of like uh, try attempting a connection with Dax. Sorry, yeah. With, with, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what could possibly happen? Flirting with someone who has the power of Ada, what could possibly go wrong? Okay, so Mark yeah. 1XP for that. Um, and... Uh, did you learn something significant about yourself or your impending doom, Thorin? I don't feel like I did, really, but yeah. Let me see. Yeah, Let's see, so I'm just looking at the end of session news. Yeah. Did you learn something significant about a fellow monster? Um, hmm. I feel like I learned a lot about both Daya and uh, uh, Ada, actually, at the same time today, but um, I'm struggling to give it to words, but just the fact that um, Daya found a way to sort of like repurpose this desire for, for, for this internalized desire for worship to take control of the situation. I think like <clears throat> that speaks to me in a way of like harnessing instinct towards something useful is really intriguing to me. Uh, with Ada, I guess I would say that I'm learning a little bit more about her, uh, like her, her needs and desires. Yeah. Yeah, Hello? absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so that's one XP and yeah. Okay. And then I'll move on to Ada. Did you express your monstrous nature or your humanity? I think so. Um, I think yes. I have like a, an amazing amorphous power that can give herself over to anyone who will devote themselves to her doom. Yeah. It couldn't be better. It's like romantic, isn't it? It is romantic. <laughs> and then uh, did you learn something significant about yourself or your impending doom? I think so because yeah, yeah you learned I you think... have a fate that's tied up with Sister Dex. Mm -hmm. I have to take very good care of Sister Dex mm -hmm. so we could be there together. <laughs> and then did you learn something significant about a fellow monster? Um, and once again, this can apply to any monster, not just the, the agents. I'm just putting in my XP already from that last series of questions if you didn't do it. So yes, is this a third question or a the third read? question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think Daya, uh, Daya took control, and Daya's taking control is very much a sort of how should we say? Um, oh, I wouldn't say angry God. I would say <laughs> punishing, <laughs> punishing uh, a a reaction, so to speak. So so. 
um, I learned that um, in that thing because like the bugs didn't really make much of sense to her, but the whole going after the elder, just like oh he's mad at her. Yeah. 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 Now she owes him. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So go ahead and take uh, XP for that too. So it's three in okay. total. And then, uh, so Daya, did you express your monstrous nature or your humanity? Oh, oh buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and work that. And did you learn something significant about yourself or your impending doom? Um, I, I think a little of both. Um, I, I think we saw shades of what what Daya's doom would be. Like, he, this is very obviously a sort of like his anger and his need could lead him into a, a, a fiery destruction, especially for people from people that he like tramples over along the way. Um, but I think I learned something uh, about just him on a more personal level of this like feeling of betrayal and anger at, at the, the elder for lying to him, um, both that she would and that she could. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. And then uh, the last question is, did you learn something significant about a fellow monster? To see sort of to the heart of Ada that that she's so lonely that she would like give herself her will her everything over to someone else to use just so they could be connected that they, that she would have someone that's tied to her it's amazing yeah very cool so that's three x that you're jealous <laughs> Oh my god, no, totally. I'm absolutely jealous. Are you are you are you freaking kidding me? I'm already thinking about the next session and how I'm gonna start being all interplayer, inter-character, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so which brings us to Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Only me. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're getting you ready for that. So for next, we get to the doom question. So for every no, you may choose to mark doom. So once again, this is voluntary. Uh, so I remember, uh, Thorn, you did try to yeah. uncover at least one key. So that's a yes, so, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but I think I get two no's for the next one. Ooh, tell me why. Yeah, you didn't reach for the light. No yeah, one and I don't. The light today. <laughs> yeah, and um, the darkness. Um, technically speaking, the darkness didn't ask me of anything, did it? Well, the Manananga was trying to convince you. Yeah, but I didn't deny it either. I didn't categorically reject it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's two doom already. Yay! <laughs> uh, and then elective so, doom. Yeah, yeah, and so Ada. Uh, for you, you got to guess the key. Uh, I remember that happening. Did you guess the key? I said that there was a key to grasp, but I think uh, Thorne actually made the roll for that's it. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So technically, technically, we're at a no for that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a that's a possible. Uh, I, I just took a doom move. I, I don't want to like over doom immediately. <laughs> so I'll just kind of let these roll. But I'll listen to the questions so I can think about those sure. as when I do want to push that. Yeah, yeah so that makes sense. If I don't do something positive is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, yeah. overall, I think the whole session was sunny and positive because of Sister Dax. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is the best day of, of my life thus far. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and so uh, definitely uh, the second question is, did you completely deny what the darkness demands of you? Um, ooh, yeah, I think it's technically a no because to be the downfall of those I care for, I feel like we're getting close to that with the with Sister Dax. Um, that's definitely uh, in the cards. And, and it, yeah, and, and probably Mickey too, I, you mm -hmm. know. That's true, that's true. Yeah, and then the next question is, uh, did you reach for the light with someone? We didn't get to roll that move, so. But like you said, you're not going to mark the doom uh, in this case, but yeah. 
All right. And then Daya, uh, you got to open Doom's door. Uh, yes. I don't think you completely denied what the darkness demands of you. <laughs> uh, no, I was I was looking like definitely on a general level. I did not deny it, but um, uh, looking at my specific ones, I think I I cursed someone I used to love. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So perfect, absolutely. Mwah. So that's a possible doom right there. Chef kiss. Yeah. Oh, it's a definite doom. <laughs> so good, so good. And then did you reach for the light with someone? That didn't happen either. So that's two possible doom marks you could take if you want. Like, if you want and to. That will that will fill me up on XP and on doom. Ooh, nice. Picking out doom moves is so much fun. Um <laughs> Leandra's character is like rolling every doom time we say doom. No, I don't need any other doom move. I have the best doom move in the world. <laughs> Yeah, you're talking about the teenage, the teenage girl uh, <laughs> dream, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So that those are our end of session moves. Um, with that, I think we've come to the end of the session, and then we'll do a quick stars and wishes off recording. But for everybody who is listening or watching, thank you so much. Uh, I had fun playing as Asher did. We'll see. We we may script change any of that. I just want to be clear about that. Uh, so we'll, we'll feel free to script change any of that. But I had fun. Um, and so we will see you all next time. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>